Well, hello there, Space Monkeys. Welcome to Political Fight Club. Happy Zombie Jesus Day to you, if that's the type of thing you celebrate. I don't so much, but, you know, happy day to you if that's the thing you're into. Um, welcome to Political Fight Club. What we're going to talk about today is the fool's errand that is running more de Justice Democrats right now. I would honestly like somebody that is of the Democratic Socialist or Social Democrat ilk to answer me this question. How have things changed? How has the political landscape changed for the advantage of these people? And what makes you think that running somebody like Nina Turner again with the same playbook that we used last time has any chance of success? Now, I'm all about like returns on investment when it comes to this stuff, which is what led me away from donating to these people in the first place. I donated to many of the squad members, including Nina Turner. I was very excited when I first started PFC like 18 months ago about Nina Turner running for Ohio's 11th district. But then what ended up happening is the squad didn't do anything when they had plenty of leverage to do so over the first year and a half of Joe Biden's presidency. And Nina Turner got her clock cleaned in a run that was much more advantageous to her now than it would be nowadays or like today. So if you guys haven't heard, the Congressional Progressive Caucus, they endorsed Chantel Brown this time, not Nina Turner, which I talked about on my Rockfin episode. What I think Nina should do, spoiler alert, is turn on the squad, you know, start calling them out by name. If you do that, you might have a chance at not being completely embarrassed when you run this time because you might get some of the Sanders swarm and the people that you disillusioned with your first anemic run to get back on board with you. Still don't think you're going to win, but that's what I would do. They turn their back on you, lean into it, go after them, call them out for what they failed on. That includes Biden, all the Democrats, and especially the squad. That might give you a fighting chance. But I digress. The political landscape has changed drastically since then, not just in the lack of endorsement that Nina's getting from the Congressional Progressive Caucus, but also the Democrats have gotten absolutely nothing done for the last 18 months, which inherently puts anybody running as a Democrat at a disadvantage. It also means Chantel Brown just got in there. She now has the back, the backing of the entire establishment. All of the, that PAC money is going to be hers, and also she's got the progressives, which is a group of like 90 people, including the entire squad members, backing her up instead of Nina. So I, my question is, with all of those extra disadvantages built in, and the fact that Nina Turner got two to one outraised Chantel Brown in the last run, is there any change in game plan that these people have, the boutique left who defends Nina Turner, all these people who are now put in a a hell of a conundrum, if I may say so myself. All the people that have been worshipping AOC Inc. and Nina Turner that didn't realize until just now that all of the people in Congress are not going to help any progressive candidates, which is something that, you know, I've been saying for a year and a half, but now David Dole and all of those boutique lefties are all flabbergasted and put between a rock and a hard place because now they have to choose between Nina Turner, who just got their, her, uh, she got turned on by the rest of the AOCers. I just... How is Nina going to win now? <laughs> it makes me laugh a little bit because they're all taken by surprise as if they haven't been warned over the last year and a half that you can't trust the squad. Uh, I, I think that's kind of funny, actually. I think it was kind of obvious, and it's funny to watch all of these boutique lefties like act surprised that Nina Turner is suddenly being ostracized. And now Nina's in a very bad position because she's already alienated the base and the true lefties who propelled her to you know, the status that she's at right now, and she's also alienated all the people or been alienated by the people that are already in Congress that are quote-unquote progressive. So hilarious. Can these people explain to me exactly what the new game plan is? Because the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. And as far as I can tell, and I've talked to plenty of people in DSA and people that are of the ilk of reforming the Democratic Party from within, and none of them can ever give me an answer. None of them can ever give me an answer other than, well, we just have to donate harder. We just have to vote harder. Yeah, which is just means, donate harder, you peons. I know you've given $277 million to the squad to get them reelected, and Bernie Sanders as well. We're going to need another quarter billion from you guys, at least, if we're going to get Nina Turner incorporated into Congress, which we've seen that the establishment already has a new game plan. We saw it in Nina Turner's last campaign. They pumped millions of dollars of dark money into Chantel Brown's campaign to smear Nina and did a, you know, 
ad campaign to destroy her at the last second, and Nina got her clock cleaned. So what's the idea now? She outraised Chantel Brown two to one. Do we need four to one? Five to one? Ten to one? Is that what we're gonna need to get Nina Turner elected? I don't think that's gonna actually work, and even if it does work, I'm not sure that people are gonna believe Nina to go in there and be different than the AOCs of the world, but she can't even, on the campaign trail, call them out rhetorically. So this seems either naive or insane. I think a lot of the boutique lefties who defend AOC and, and in fact have defended Nina Turner in the past, they don't really want change. They just want like the facade that they're actually trying to change things, but they're perfectly okay with the status quo, which is why they defend the Democratic Party and the AOCs of the world who don't actually change anything. They want to look like they're being progressive and look like they're trying to get things done when they really don't mind if things stay exactly the same way that they are. But I mean... Cenk Uger just gave, uh, or he says, he says he's going to give $25,000 to Nina Turner's campaign after she got betrayed by the Congressional Progressive Caucus. I don't think it's going to be enough. I, I know that Cenk has some billionaire backers, so he's getting money from billionaires, and if he gives a bunch of money as a multimillionaire to Nina Turner's campaign, you know, she might have a fighting chance, but then haven't you just become what you pr pretend to hate? Like, you're just another rich capitalist giving a bunch of dark money to Nina Turner and then calling <laughs> calling it a progressive campaign. It's like, how much dark money is Nina Turner willing to take from billionaires and millionaires to get her progressive campaign jump-started without changing her game plan? I don't know. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just guessing, just kind of spitballing. <laughs> but me thinks that's not the type of campaign that actually works. That's not even like the type of campaign that Bernie Sanders ran. So what are we doing here? What are we doing here? What's the... Other than asking other multimillionaires who are of the like Liz Warren ilk on the you know wine tasting soccer mom elitist wine and cheese tasting circuit to give tens of thousands or give the maximum twenty six hundred that you can give to Nina Turner and just hoping for the best, I don't see how you're gonna generate any excitement around this stuff. And if I may, a lot of the you know squad wannabes that I've seen coming up the new crop of Justice Democrats, if you will, they're utterly uninspiring. I saw a couple of them on Brianna Joy Gray's show the other day, and they were defending electoralism. And, you know, I'm not going to name drop them. They seem like nice enough ladies, but they sound exactly like the uh, squad did when they were on the campaign trail. When Brianna Joy Gray asked them about, how are you different? How are you categorically different than the squad members that we've already spent a quarter of a billion dollars getting elected? How are you going to be different when you get into the office? And uh, their answer is literally, well, I'd like to think that I have more integrity than those people. I think I'm going to go in there and be braver than them. I'd like to think that all of them are wimps and I am brave. And I'm going to go in there and not be co-opted, which is not, in fact, integrity. It's not even humility. It's just arrogance and naivety because you absolutely will go in there and get co-opted, especially if you can't even rhetorically call them out, which they don't during this interview. They, they go out of their way to not call out the squad members. If you can't even have fiery rhetoric, rhetoric against the squad members while you're on the campaign trail and call them out for being anemic and having gotten nothing done, then how do we expect you to go in there and actually call them out when you're working with them? We can't. So these people not only are not going to win, if they do win, I think it's safe to say that they're going to go in there and perform exactly the same way that the current squad members do. So I just, what's the play here, guys? What's the new play? We already know what the establishment has done to adapt for Justice Democrats getting elected in the first place. They're going to throw dark money. They're going to do smear campaigns to the tune of millions of dollars. That's how Chantel Brown won. How have we adapted? If you're a football team or a basketball team and you're running into a defense that is prepared for your set play and you just run it down the middle and you get stonewalled. You run it down the middle, you get stonewalled. And again, down the middle, get stonewalled. How many downs do you need before we decide to do a passing play? Or before you guys decide to update on the fly? And I haven't seen that because I don't think that these people really want to. They're either insane or they're perfectly fine with the status quo. They just want to give the facade that they're actually trying to get things done. In which case, all they're doing is just funneling money into the Democratic Party through these Justice Democrat campaigns, which is not going to help anybody. It's not going to help anybody. If it gets any of them elected, which, hear me now, quote me later, I don't think another Justice Democrat's ever going to get elected. If they do, it'll be like it slips through the cracks and it gets, you know, there's one or two. And I see no evidence out there that 
indicates to me that any of these people are going to go in there and be any different than the current squad members. I think they all want to just go in there and become part of the big club. They want to go in there and get taxpayer dollars to pay their salary so they can tweet and virtue signal all day. But I'm open to discussion and I'm open to any arguments that these people have that think that democratic reformationism is the way to go. Um, but I've never gotten an answer. No matter how many people I talk to that are of that ilk, I never get a coherent answer other than just like, let's be nice to them and give them more money, you peons. I know you already gave them everything you had last time and things are way worse now and you're more poor than the last election, but you're just going to have to give them five to one. Give Nina Turner five to one advantage over Chantel Brown. That'll offset the millions of dollars and all the PAC money that she's getting. I don't understand these people whatsoever. Um, and it's becoming more and more impossible for these people to defend what they've been defending for the last year and a half. It's just, at what point do the rest of the people wake up and realize that they're frauds and they're grifters and they don't really give a shit about changing the system. They give a shit about making money off of the current system while giving the, the veneer of progressive values and the v veneer of fighting for progressive policies. I don't think they really care about that stuff. So, but, you know... You know me, I will change my mind and admit I was wrong if uh, somebody can get Nina elected and she'll go in there and knock the squad's heads together like a bunch of coconuts. And I'm sure that's what it would sound like because I don't think there's much brains in there. I think it would sound like a bunch of hollow coconuts being knocked together. If she were to do that, I would eat my words. But that's not the timeline we live in. And I have yet to see a single coherent argument coming from any of these people as to why we should give tens of millions or hundreds of millions more dollars to these people who have done absolutely nothing for us. I mean, no, no Tea Party tactics. They're not even rhetorically calling Joe Biden out for not doing executive orders. They'll tweet like, oh, we should forgive student loan debt, but never say that Joe Biden can do it unilaterally using the Higher Education Act of 1965, for instance. They'll just virtue signal, tweet about it, but they never call out Joe Biden by name. They never go on the warpath against people that can actually get these things done. So you're just tweeting. And to say, you know, you know, forgiving student loan debt would be good for the economy. It's like, yeah, no shit, water's wet. That doesn't do anything if you're not actually trying to leverage the people that can actually get that done to get it done. And the squad isn't doing that. So it's a very uh, dark and sad time right now in America. The uh, censorship apocalypse upon us. There's rampant propaganda. We're a uh, capitalist nation in an empire in decline. And that's why you're seeing the propaganda and censorship go into overload. And the Democratic Party is essentially a carbon copy of the Republican Party, other than that they have a slightly different PR team. And we're just going to sit here and watch the world burn, apparently. So um, what we should be doing, guys... Don't focus on electoral politics. We have to be there for each other. The only way that we're going to get through this is together. Mutual aid, direct action, protest, hitting the streets. I think the only way that we ever get anything done in this country is by making the politicians that are already in office more afraid of us than they are of their corporate masters, and that is a tall order. So, But that's the only way it's going to work. FDR himself didn't do any of the things that he did economically until the Congress of Industrial Organizations and a whole bunch of unions and indeed communist parties and socialist parties got together, put their differences aside, and united to create a huge voting block that put FDR's re-election chances in jeopardy. That's how they got a lot of the things done, the New Deal. It never would have happened if it weren't for the grassroots uprising of tens of millions of people outside of the political parties. And that's what we have to do. Even then, again, there's no guarantee of success. But there's almost zero chance of success doing what we've been doing for the last six goddamn years and throwing tens of millions and hundreds of millions of dollars, in fact, towards Bernie and AOC Inc. You know, how many times are we going to run headfirst into a brick wall before we stop? How many times are we going to run this play that has been stopped by the neoliberal establishment defense before we decide to run another play? I don't know. And uh, me thinks the boutique left uh, it will probably just keep running the same play constantly and never adapt because they don't they don't want to they're okay with the way things are they'll just go out and pretend on their shows that they care so maybe I'm wrong maybe I'm a crazy person but I don't think I'm a crazy person I think these people are the insane people keep fighting that good fight out there guys I love you talk to you later.